I'm Kara Esser for Morningstar. Today, I'm joined by Dana Emery, President, CEO, and Director of Fixed Income at Dodge & Cox. She's here to talk about gold-rated Dodge & Cox income. Dana, thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I want to start by talking about the credit exposure in the portfolio. The fund tends to be overweight compared to peers and the benchmark. Can you talk a little bit about the recent underperformance in the credit portfolio and also the long-term view for holding so much credit in such a portfolio? Yes, thank you. We um, tend to overweight credit, and we have throughout our history, um, but the degree to which we overweight really varies on the market environment, and we're looking at a combination of fundamentals, uh, valuations, and in combination, what uh, type of long-term return we can generate from each investment that we're making. We're in an environment now where we think uh, the fundamentals, in many cases, um, are getting a little bit more strained. But we look at when we're looking at companies, we're looking at their balance sheet, their cash flow generation ability, and their fallback options. So their ability to withstand a prolonged period um, of downturn in their business or industry. At in the case of valuations, we're looking at uh, the current yield premium that we're earning over a treasury, um, and that translates into what type of total return we can earn over our three to five year investment horizon. We've been increasing credit um, since about June of 14. We've been gradually increasing our credit, and we accelerated that in the summer of 15 when valuations got very um, stressed, in our opinion, and created some new opportunities in credit. So we increased our credit weight last year about 8 percent, up to about 55 percent of our portfolio. Um, so we do have a significant uh, exposure to credit um, that has underperformed recently. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the problems in, um, in the, the biggest problem areas in credit have been in the energy area, in metals and mining, as well as anything associated with emerging markets. Um, all, of the per, all the securities in our portfolio are U.S. dollar, but, um, they, but those areas in particular were, led to our underperformance last year. Um, but given the starting valuations, we think that uh, the math is in your favor. The yield premium that you're earning in corporates right now is substantial, about 175 basis points for investment grade corporates over that of treasuries. And that math starts to work in your favor if you have a longer term investment horizon. You have a high probability of outperforming treasuries, assuming you're doing your credit work right. Um, and uh, you have a high probability of producing um, above treasury type of return over a, a coming three year period. Okay, great. I want to touch a little bit on that emerging market stake uh, that you talked about, excuse mm -hmm. me, the non the non-U.S. issue mm -hmm. stake. Um, that's been increasing over the years. It's also been a rough spot for, for the fund in the last year or so. Can you talk a little bit about, about those holdings and then also what the long-term view is for, for adding that to a core bond portfolio? Yeah, so right now we have about um, just under 19 percent in non-U.S. issuers. They're all U.S. dollar, so we're not taking the local currency risk um, directly in those investments. And about 6 percent um, is invested in emerging market issuers that, that are domiciled in an emerging market. Um, we've been increasing that gradually um, over the last 10 years or so and accelerated more recently uh, for a combination of factors. One is that um, the capital markets are opening up. More issuers are issuing in dollars to diversify their funding sources. Many of those issuers that we invest in have a reason to issue in dollars. They've either got assets in the U.S. or assets tied to the U.S. dollar. Um, and we're doing the same approach we do with our domestic issuers, which is looking at the bottom-up fundamentals um, and looking at their ability to withstand a downturn. Um, but the added uh, factor when you're investing outside the U.S. is looking at macro factors in that given region um, in terms of their economic outlook, inflation and rates, um, the, the currency movement that might impact their ability to service debt, and then governance factors. Uh, making sure that we feel that we have good protections as a debt investor uh, when we're investing outside the U.S. Switching gears, I'd like to talk about interest rates. Dodge & Cox income has been short uh, its benchmark for a while and currently is short the benchmark in terms of duration. Can you talk about your outlook for rates? Yes, our duration is running about four years in our income fund uh, versus about 5.6 for the Barclays aggregate. Um, we've stayed pretty constant, but the index itself has lengthened as there's been more longer-term issuance, mm -hmm. and at lower rates, the duration of fixed income investments is longer. So we've stayed pretty steady, and the index has lengthened. And we don't believe we should lengthen into the index um, just to match the index. We're really trying to think about what type of portfolio can produce an attack attractive real rate of return over the coming three to five years. And uh, getting out longer in this environment where 
we don't think you're well paid for taking interest rate risk. Um, and the market, we're starting to embark on a Fed tightening cycle. Uh, we don't think it makes sense to take on a lot more interest rate risk in the portfolio. And we think the market-based measures of, of what, what the Fed movements are going to be are expecting very minimal um, tightening. Um, and we think there's, uh, and also market-based measures of inflation are very low. And so we think there's room for a negative surprise there. It wouldn't take much to get the market off these, we, what we think are very, very rich valuations. And that movement would cause a price impact that could overwhelm the income you're earning. So being shorter um, causes us to have less price exposure uh, to interest rate risk, which we think is warranted given the, the low yields we're operating in. Finally, I want to talk about liquidity. Dodge & Cox Income is a large bond fund, and investors can redeem their, their money whenever they want on a daily basis. So how do you think about and manage liquidity in the fund? Yes, it's, a bit, it's an important topic. There's been a lot of changes in market structure since the financial crisis. Uh, one of the biggest that uh, people point out is that dealers are not able to hold as much inventory as they have in the past, and so they aren't able to play that intermediary role um, to, to as great of an extent. Uh, the biggest uh, focus area in fixed income has been on corporate bonds, and uh, uh, we would contend that the corporate bond inventory at dealers has actually stayed pretty steady. Um, so, so we aren't counting on that liquidity from the dealers in, in a more adverse scenario. Um, we think about liquidity with our fund in terms of layers of liquidity, um, and we're a broad-based fund that has a combination of cash and treasuries, mortgages, asset backs, and corporate bonds. Um, and we think that uh, the degree that we have the higher quality, more liquid instruments um, provide very adequate protection uh, to our underlying investors. Our underlying investors are comprised uh, predominantly of institutionally oriented entities and entities uh, or individuals investing for retirement. Um, so we, we don't see um, a, a, a likelihood of a scenario with a significant um, outflow simultaneous. Um, so we think that uh, we've got adequate protections in how the fund is structured. There's other um, protections that exist. Um, we have not had to draw upon, but um, there's lines of credit. Um, there's also cross-fund borrowing. And then for institutional clients that uh, would, would request it, we could have an in-kind distribution. Dana, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. For Morningstar, I'm Kara Asser.